Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we have Tracy Dumblazer with her beautiful book. Please hold it up. Woo-hoo. Conquer your karmic relationship, heal spiritual trauma to open your heart and restore your soul. So welcome, Tracy. Thank you so much. It's so good to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here too. Um, I wanted to start, I'm just going to break out your title in little segments. Okay, so yeah. the first part is karmic karma. Um, so what is karma and how does it affect everyone? Karma, the word itself comes from Sanskrit and it means uh, action and reaction. It's like a, a concept, the, uh, the reaction to every action taken. And the concept is that everything that we do or say sends off ripples of energy and there's an effect, whether or not we know it, whether or not we see it, there's an effect. There's a, there's a a place that that lands. And then that happens over time or over and over again through a habit, it creates a pattern. And we are uh, imprinted with those patterns before we incarnate. When we come into our, our body, we have a series of patterns and those create the lens that we see life through. It, it uh, makes us perceive things in a particular way. It attracts certain things to us. And all of that stuff lends us to then what is our destiny or our purpose. The things that we need to learn from those patterns, whether or not it's changing them, whether or not it's embelling, embellishing them, whatever it is, it's, it's gonna offer an opportunity for us to transform those patterns into a new way of life. Okay, so um, I, we actually did a reading earlier before we started the show, and you had um, a bunch of different things about my vocational karma, I guess that you'd say. So there's vocational karma, there's like relationship karma. Can you tell me all the different types of ways in which you think about karma? Well, so I, th- I think of, in fact, instead of using the word karma, karma is the pattern, right? It's action that was taken, but it created a relationship. And you aren't just your vocation. You are a a person. You are human. You're a person. You're a woman. Then you're your heritage. You 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 have all these different aspects, but you're but none of them are separate. But each one of those aspects of you creates a relationship to food and money and resources. It creates a relationship to uh, sexuality and religion and divinity, it creates, and creativity. It creates a relationship to your environment and uh, friends and family. And it creates a, a relationship to what you'd call your vocation. Mm-hmm. So but all of those things are relationships. That's the one thing that, that, that uh, karma has in common with all of this stuff is we have a, re- it creates a, a pre-existing relationship to everything. Okay, got it. And just to make this really concrete, so in my destiny, um, I have had pre-existing lives of which I've been an explorer, a healer, um, um, and uh, a writer perhaps, and that in each, and then there is just this kind of general theme, it seemed throughout them, which is freedom, um, connecting to and it seems like this life the theme is about you know connecting to my feminine and masculine and um, and, and being inclusive and all those different things so right. that was my reading so that would actually be and that's going to affect how I'm relating to my divinity sexuality environment is mm-hmm. that right absolutely okay, okay so divinity would be like if i'm looking at things from a female masculine lens that's going to be affecting how i view divinity is that how that works yes yeah, so so in the book and in fact i'll i'll pull this up it, there are five parts to this book mm-hmm. and this part i'm going to just read you it's um uh it's called infinity and it's a karmic relationship to sexuality creativity spirituality and the divine mm. Because all of those things are literally the same line of energy, Mm. different vibrations. So you begin with sexuality, then you open up to creativity, 
then you open up to spirituality and then you open up to divinity. Mm, okay. So divinity is that thing that we can't really access here. Right. It's, it's the highest of all highs and we can receive it on that line of energy through spirituality, through creativity and through sexuality. Got it. And so those are the ways in which I relate. So everyone, in, in my case, I have this like masculine feminine thing going on. Everyone's going to have a different kind of relationship and, and freedom is something that's like one of the big things that I'm all like hell bent on. So, right. so these yeah. are, th those are things in my previous lives that, um, and patterns of behavior that I've had many, 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 many lifetimes that actually right. influence now how yeah. I think about sexuality, creativity, spirituality, and divinity. Yes. Is that right? Did I get it? You got it. You got okay, it. got it. All right. And then um, we're in, in, as well as the environment, friends and family, and vocation, like all these kind of pre existing patterns mm -hmm. influence the way in which I think and act and behave. In, right. Okay, got it. Um, well, so let's let's break that down just really quick let's say you know you are born a person is born into a culture that is very exclusive mm -hmm. and they are a person who is very inclusive mm -hmm. right so they're going to have familial traditions that are going to constantly want to set boundaries with them that they consistently don't want to abide by mm -hmm. right and so they are going to find themselves through those conflicts and then, eventually, uh, and then eventually make a choice to go towards what their soul needs. And that might be either leaving the traditions behind or being so vocal about the need for the traditions to change that they, you know, uh, bring others along with them. Got so, that, it. so each person has a pattern and they're born into a situation that's going to allow them you know, it's, it's like when you pray for, or you ask for courage, mm -hmm. spirit gives you many opportunities to be courageous, courageous. So that means that, that, that scary things can happen because you're really intended to be create courageous. Okay. Got it. And those are things in your title. It's conquer your karmic relationships, heal spiritual trauma, open to open up your heart and restore your soul. So this is the restore your soul piece. Right. Because if you have parts of your soul that are kind of like, uh, I love my Asian family, but it's very, it is actually very um, exclusive. You know, it's not, it, we're very, um, yeah, the Asian culture is very exclusive. And so I'm, and there's always been this kind of, and you had said also, I'm multicultural. So I've been raised in, uh, American culture. And if you look at Asian culture and American culture, so many of the values are different. The only place they intersect are um, money is important. <laughs> money. Right. Yes. Yes. Money and hard work are important. This is the intersection point between my East and West cultures. But yeah. so one is so, so basically to heal my soul, it would be you know, in my particular case or whatever, so many pe person may have exactly the opposite. You had said like right. someone maybe has no boundaries and so everything's inclusive. So their soul may be to be exclusive. Right. And to begin to trim down what they're open to so that they can better focus on one thing, therefore accomplish something. Right. Interesting. You know? yeah. yeah. So every soul has a different pattern necessarily that they came in with and in yes. this life has a different way of relating to that in order to restore their soul which is to be balanced i assume to yeah it, um i specifically use that because um many people i mean every all of us um oftentimes a past life has importance to us because we have either uh, died in in crisis or in pain or unresolved mm -hmm. about something. I mean, and that's and that's the, the, when we are left with spiritual trauma, we are left unresolved. And oftentimes, those pieces of our spirit are left in that time and space. Mm -hmm. And we we do something we call soul retrieval 
which is go back to that time and space, resolve what was going on with your new understanding that you have from this life, take that and, and then bring that part of your spirit and, and integrate. Mm -hmm. And when you've done like people, uh, when we, when we talk about mental illness and, and all the different very, you know, variations of, of what we call mental illness or imbalance, oftentimes they are spiritual issues that people have unresolved and have disassociated their connection to them because they can't rationally make sense of what it means to them. Mm, yeah. Have so this is going back to what you had said earlier during my own reading, but I think is generally true is that in shamanism, they believe in personal power. Yeah. And so if part of your personal power includes little soul fragments, like let's say that I was um, buried alive in one lifetime and I lost my like fiery spirit, I have right. to go back and retrieve that part because otherwise I'll be in this lifetime with a part of myself in another lifetime. So it's about retrieving that soul and bringing it back and relating it to my current life in a new way. So that's the restoring. That's exactly soul. Okay. Yes. So I want to, um, so we were talking about the restoring soul part. Um, and in, th in that particular case, it's also healing a spiritual trauma because any trauma is probably considered, or is that true? Is, is every trauma considered a spiritual trauma? Like, in, and if so, what does that mean, a spiritual trauma? A spiritual trauma is uh, any, any time we experience any trauma, it lives in an energetic form hmm. that, we, that can, we can carry it down through every lifetime if it is unresolved mm. so let's let's say i'm victimized in this lifetime and i don't ever deal with it i don't process it i don't understand it i remain whatever i remain in denial let's say i'm going to carry that little nugget all the in into every lifetime and continue to draw on it until i deal with it mm. and when that when we experience that in a short-term fashion we call it a post-traumatic stress syndrome, mm -hmm. right? It, when somebody has been, uh, so I, I was raped many years ago. Oh, and sorry, yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you for that. It's so fun. I, I'm so I'm so far out of the- <laughs> Yeah, you're not <laughs> in it anymore, but yeah. But, uh, but from that experience, you, you wait until the point at which you feel safe to deal with the trauma, to deal with the grief and to deal with the rage that comes up from that experience of being powerless. Mm. So essentially that uh, when we say spiritual, we mean energetic mm -hmm. and unexpressed mm. and unresolved. Mm. Kind of mm. had all three of those meanings. And so whenever there will, there will come a day, a, t a day and a time whether it's in this lifetime or the next, where you will resolve every spiritual trauma that has ever occurred for you. And, and one of the things that we are experiencing right now on the planet are the cultural traumas mm. of enslavement. Um, that's happening everywhere, not just here in America, because slavery happened everywhere. And, it's, and, and still people are being enslaved and trafficked mm -hmm. on, on, on every level. So we are dealing with the, the past grief of this country and what it was built on. Mm -hmm. And there are many cultural traumas that, that many people that are either in the culture or not in the culture, everybody's processing and has a role in processing that grief and then coming out to, a, to choosing a new relationship to it, which is inclusive, regardless of how people feel we're going to get there because there is only one place to get. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to put, I think this is what you meant. I just want to make sure I put words around what I think you're saying and tell me what yeah. I'm right. Um, so here comes COVID-19. All of us are now um, shackled into our homes. Mm -hmm. We don't have personal, some of the personal freedoms that we had before. We can't even show our full faces anymore, you know, because we have masks. And so there's this huge grief that we're experiencing on a collective level 
of, oh my gosh, you know, I can't do any of these things. I feel so enslaved by this, this, yeah. this um, virus. virus. And so, so what could be coming out of this is a heart opening. So tell me a little bit about what the heart opening is in this case, because I think it's not, it's kind of like, what? How could we be a heart opening? And there's this, so instead of an individual karma, there's like a societal karma. Yes. yes. So we have to deal with our many different roles, whether I'm Chinese and the Chinese people definitely enslave people or, you know, South African, whatever it is, we're right. having to deal with instances where we have subjugated someone else to harm for our own power and desire. Okay, yeah. so now, how does this create new inclusivity and own an open heart, this news? So think of it this way. So let's take the mask thing. Mm -hmm. It's not really rational that people are losing their minds about wearing a piece of cloth over their mouth. Right. Uh, it's not, it's for the good of everyone, right? It's not rational that people are getting so upset about it, but you, you nailed it. It's not, it's not about being rational. It, it's that people are locking on to this illusion that the government is telling them that they have to, and nobody's going to tell me what to do. And then it's Democrat, and then it's Republican. Like they politicize it when that has nothing to do with it. Mm. People are looking ways, and here's the heart opening. When when our heart first opens, the first thing that's going to come out is the pain. Mm. And everyone has grief, whether it is conscious or unconscious, whether it is from this lifetime or another, mm. if it is for someone or for ourselves. Uh, and they're going to put that on the one thing they can control in their mind, which is wearing a mask. Mm, okay. They're going to use that 